This is Hannibal back here from the HannibalTV.com. One of my favorite personalities in the wrestling business, Harley Race, uh, had a dark side of the ring on him. A lot of people say Harley Race doesn't really belong on a dark side of the ring. But I would say out of all the ones this year, John Tenta is the least. I mean, he had a tragic ending, but he's the least to belong on a dark side of the ring. Harley Race had a very uh, dark life as far as uh, accidents. I, I've i met him. I said, uh, yeah, I think I've met him maybe once at a Cauliflower Art Club, but I did uh, two week long training camps. One at his Eldon, Missouri training camp with him, and one of his Troy, Missouri training camp. And the Troy, Missouri one is the one that I did the uh, interview with him on. And you can watch that interview in the description of this video him i always got along with him both both times he wanted me to go in and train there but without a work visa it would just be too expensive for me to train full time there because I, I wouldn't be able to get a regular job i did wrestle for his his company world league wrestling before as well as far as the dark side of the ring it goes through that he always kind of wanted to be a wrestler. He was always getting into fights. He beat up his principal. Uh, he liked confrontation. He was in a bunch of automobile accidents. He would drive really fast, from what I understand, drink while he was driving, and also smoke while he was driving. And a lot of wrestlers were always very afraid to drive with him because of that and his history of getting into car accidents, he was also in a in a boating accident that was very serious. And he was also he had been drinking, I guess, since that morning scotch. So I mean, obviously, uh, he had a drinking issue. A lot of wrestlers have it. I'm not holding that against him <laughs> at all. He definitely they didn't get into this, but when. Uh, when wrestler like Marty, they should have used Marty Jannetty and Ric Flair on this. Obviously, Ric Flair probably holds a big grudge against Dark Side of the Ring for all the heat that they got him. But Marty Jannetty and Ric Flair both do great Harley Race impressions. And usually in these stories about Harley Race, he's always smoking. And he was a chain smoker. I, I believe he was smoking in the shoot interview. Uh, he smoked in his wrestling school just just one cigarette after another, and I believe he he died of lung cancer. So it's actually considering the amount that he smoked, it's surprising that he made it to uh, seventy six. Uh, they talk about how tough he was. They didn't. They showed a uh, a clip when they were talking about all of the, all of his injuries of him doing a shoot interview where he like knocked on the the steel plate in his forearm, but they did that to talk about that. Um, he had had like, he was full of bolts and steel plates, but one of the reasons apparently why he was so tough, because when he hit you with that forearm that had all the steel in it, I mean, that's worse than a brass knuckle to get hit with like, a, f a forearm and a fist that that that's that heavy and they talk about how he would even before i think he had his his first accident where uh, one of his wives was killed i think he was married four or five times i met one of his wives bj but that was one of his, his later wives uh she also smoked heavily as well i remember that but uh he would take on challengers, and he was a carnival wrestler. He would use headbutts and cheap tactics when it was someone tough, because he was doing it for a living. Uh, the one story that was told where he said he, he went to a WWE show, and in, in this version of the story on the dark side of the ring, and again, they've... 
they have reported stuff that's known not to be true. Like in the case where Abdullah the Butcher, they wasted a ton of time on his episode trying to convince people he can't read or write, which he, which he can. That's a pure lie. But they told a story in this that Harley Ray set a WWE ring on fire. I mean, according to Hulk Hogan's book and Harley Race's book, that did not actually happen. He said he was going to do it, and he showed up at a WWE event with a gun. But according to Hogan, when he actually confronted Hogan at that show, he asked for a job. So I would find it very hard to believe that he would set a ring on fire, then get hired in the same day, and that there wouldn't be cops and everything around. Apparently, the reason he was allowed into that arena in Harley's book version is he had an office in that arena from working in the Kansas City territory. He supposedly lost 500000 because of WWE coming into that territory. So that's one of the reasons why he was so upset that they were coming. And as far as um, him wrestling for WWE, he did get an injury there that, that was going on a table. Right, in a match with Hulk Hogan, who he wrestled a lot in WWE. And it's interesting because in those days, you didn't get paid if you were hurt. And if you're hurt in a WWE ring, you could probably, even back then, you probably could have sued them and been taken care of for a long time. But I definitely don't think he sued them, and I prob- and I bet anything that uh, he didn't get paid uh, while he was hurt. I would bet anything. If he did, it would have been very little, but um, Harley just doesn't seem like the type of guy that would that would hold that against a company, even though it's a big company and it's happening in the in the company's ring or outside the ring. In that case, uh, Harley. They did mention that um, about the King gimmick. Uh, I like the King gimmick. He he looked like a cartoon King. I just have to say one thing about Harley Race in the Iron Claw. By the way. He is featured in that Iron Claw movie. And when you see Dark Side of the Ring and you hear all these clips of Harley's gravelly, tough man voice, that Iron Claw movie portrayal of Harley Race just is horrible. It's horrible. The guy sounds like a like a high school kid. It's like you couldn't have found someone with a gravelly voice. The, the casting in that was awful. I mean, the guy... Kind of looked like Harley. the The look was all right, but the the gravelly voice just was not there in the promo. Anyways, um, other than that, uh, they talked about him going to WCW. He, he's in the both the WWE and WCW halls of fame. Um, he also was was back in WWE here and there after. He famously. After Owen Hart had put diuretics in his chili at a one of his chili cook-offs that he used to do whenever WWE was in his area, he uh, zapped Owen Hart with a with a taser. Which honestly, it sounds like Owen Hart deserved that for all the ribs he played, and some of the ribs were pretty cruel. So there you go. That's my uh, that's my Harley Race review. Good, good episode overall, but yeah, for the people that that say he didn't deserve a dark side of the ring because he didn't really have a sad enough life, even his his one wife is interviewed for this and talks about his his drinking problems, and he was very mean to her. He said deep down, he was a nice man, and I do believe. That Harley Race was nice. He was always nice to me, but I could see him um, being as he is on TV with a woman. But but a lot of men were like that in those days, and that was more acceptable. Oh, also, he did train Trevor Murdoch, his most known student. I think Randy Orton trained with them a little bit. 
before he started in OVW or before his development contract started, I believe. And definitely Ted DiBiase's son trained with Harley Race, the one that's uh, in all the trouble right now. Mike D thinks Viscera was the best king. Mike Piper's uh, good. She she had a good meal with me on the weekend. David, you're welcome for reporting. Richie liked the, the Harley Race documentary. I think it was, other than the lighting the ring on fire, which, again, it's in Harley Race and Hulk Hogan's book that he never actually wrote, set the ring on fire. They just, they sometimes like to tell versions of the story that are just there for the story. Just like when they, when they uh, decided to throw me under the bus, they cut up what I said to make me look bad. And they made sure to, speaking of Piper, Mike, those assholes refused to put Piper. She was on my lap pretty much the whole time of the interview, maybe 20% of the time not. And she, they also shot some things with me and Piper. They didn't use Piper in Dark Side of the Ring once. David, you can look at the other update I just did for the status of Billy Jack. The Dark Side of the Ring people are interested in doing one on him. Obviously, he has a very dark story. And he could be in jail for the rest of his life. I, I really don't know. He's probably going uh, to have a bail hearing soon but unlikely he's going to be let out on bail. Someone says Bobby Fish sucks. Speaking of Bobby Fish, Harley Race did train him. And I remember at the Eldon, Missouri camp, I ended up driving Bobby Fish from Eldon to Kansas City because we were both, uh, he needed a ride. We were both flying out of Kansas City. I was back in 2008 or something. Uh, I didn't see the interview with him from from talking to him that day I think he was only in Noah back then he seemed fine I, I haven't really seen him uh, wrestle or anything in WWE or AEW and, and NXT but yeah Jack Kilby did an interview with him yes Mike Bobby Fish uh, by the way, 9 p.m. tonight, John Paz and I are going to do an interview celebrating his nine years. And John actually has interviewed Harley Race as well. So uh, we'll definitely talk about Harley Race in that too and take fan questions. Have a great day. Please give this uh, a thumbs up.